Hello, Startup Vision. I'm Nicolas Genet, uh, technology executive and co-founder of Codebox Technology. Hello, Nicolas. Welcome on Startup Vision. You are the co-founder of Codebox, which is a campus to become a coder. So, you know, during this difficult uh, period of time, uh, we are, are as Startup Vision give uh, the opportunity to startups and VCs to express themselves, give solutions to go through this crisis, and also to prepare for the future. And what we liked about uh, your startup is that apart from uh, providing uh, quarters that we really need, you know, talents we need, uh, you are also a sort of salvation for all those people who lost their jobs and see an opportunity with you. Well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, actually, that's how uh, we are currently living through the crisis right now at Codebox. It's, uh, we actually see that we are becoming an opportunity or a, a, a fail safe for a lot of people who uh, are thinking about their career, either because they, they know they're part of a company that won't survive the crisis, or uh, they're just basically thinking about what they're going to do after this. And um, they, they ask themselves, like, what's next? And we become, we fall on their radar. Uh, as an opportunity to become coders in a very short period of time. We're talking about four months. Yeah, so they can, in fact, in four months, you know, be ready uh, to be on the job market again. And it's, uh, it's a great opportunity. And it's, it's a very demanding program. It's an accelerated uh, boot camp. So the, the way it works is, um, and, and really what, what it was meant to be, is we're, we're there to reshape human labor and we do it one individual at a time. That's our mission. So it kind of fits the narrative today of, um, of the skill gap that we observe in the market where there's a lot of people um, who used to do traditional jobs, have a lot of cognitive, cognitive potential, they have a lot of capabilities, a lot of talents, a lot of, lots of skills, and most of all, lots of experience. And we do amazing things uh, at Codebox with people with experience because we leverage that experience and we turn it into uh, good coding talent. That's pretty much what we do. So we did wonderful things with um, teachers uh, who uh, were tired and, and sick of the, the, the school system. And we managed to train them in four months and turn them into amazing coders who have this acumen and this, this business bias that employers like so much uh, one third of our um, of our uh, of our graduates in may cohort of the last year were women so uh, that's also a trend we're seeing yeah that's a very positive thing do you do you encourage this because you know i mean uh, women usually are not really part of this world you know well that's true uh, and code box is meant to be a a an alternative way for them to try to get into that that natural interest they feel uh, around like I'm attracted by technology I'm, I'm using it a lot uh, I kind of understand it better but I don't have a year and a half to go back to school or to to take a, a college or to, to go to go grab a college degree in that in that matter so we become a, a very easy uh, alternative uh, for, for this kind of woman who wants to, to get into it, give it a try and see if she would actually make a career out of it. That's great. And um, also your, your story is very inspiring because you've been working for all those great companies like Microsoft, Vente Privé, The Real Real, uh, Mud Cloth that was uh, bought back by uh, Walmart. So you were a great CTO and then you became an entrepreneur. How did that happen? Oh, thanks for that. Um, well, so you, you can see cold box as being my calling. So uh, that's what turned me into an entrepreneur. It's the, I saw a gap. I saw an opportunity on the market. I saw a problem to solve. And I wanted to be the one tackling or proposing a solution out there to, uh, to, to tackle this, this technology or this skill gap that I was referring to earlier. Uh, and to get to that point in my, in my mindset, I had to go through all these experiences, this exponential growth that we've been through at Bon Privé, uh, this, uh, this transplant of the DNA that we 
attempted in New York uh, in, uh, as Van Preve USA, uh, my years at The Real Real. Uh, all of those, they were exponential growth experiences. They were startup experiences. And they all were enabled from my experience as a, a, a Microsoft employee and like all the culture I've learned at Pfizer and all of these things. And, um, and through all of those experiences, there was one thing that was common to all of those successful endeavors that I've been through, that I've, I've been fortunate enough to go through, and, and it was the people. So I realized that it's, it's almost a discovery that I've made. It, I realized that what makes a successful endeavor is how engaged, how committed, and um, how, how helpful people will be in understanding what matters to your business and what's important and what the priorities are. So if you manage to lead them correctly, uh, these people will be dedicated, will be truly motivated, and they will be the solution to pretty much all the problems you're going to encounter. So when you, for example, at, at Bon Privé, there was like times of exponential growth where things were breaking, falling apart. And to hold this together, you need very committed, very, very trusty people. And uh, that, that's, that's what made it happen. Same thing happened to me at, at, uh, at Mock Clock, where we had to turn, over, turn around this entire business that was struggling from a revenue standpoint and from a cost standpoint. And we, we turned it around in a way through, through the uh, commitment of the employees and the collaborators in technology. We managed to turn it around in a way that we became uh, interesting for Walmart to acquire us. Mm. And those three years I spent at uh, The Real Real, uh, building this thing from scratch, really explain or illustrated again how much how important a, a committed team and a, commit, a, a team that follows leadership and understands the vision of the company and the purpose, uh, how powerful it can be. So that, that was the common theme across all of my experiences. And I, I said, like, so why don't I put this into a program? And why don't I give not only hard skills in technology like Ruby on Rails and Python and data acumen, and like, why, why don't I also put in some soft skills uh, into this. So like, how do I teach them how to behave in a meeting and not to be afraid of things they don't know? And so there's, a, there's an equal importance given to soft skills in the code box. Uh, and tie that to the business simulation that we've created. So that makes it a unique program. And before being a business, code box was an educational program. It was a technology program. And we turned it into uh, one campus. And then one thing led to another. We now have two campuses and we're planning on a a greater expansion in the United States. And that was my next question. You know, you're a, a young startup, if I may say so, and you are scaling up. And do you think this crisis is going to impact you because you are growing up? Uh, well, we already see impacts in multiple ways. So, you know, everybody's confined. One third of the world, as we speak, is, is stuck in their homes, unable to go out. So we had to adjust to this ourselves. So uh, our, our program was really focusing on the need to be there physically and collaboration and, and our campuses was actually physical locations. Yeah, it's a school. I mean, it's a- Yeah, they're schools, they're campuses. And um, so we had to overnight alter our program and adapt it so that it, it can be followed uh, online, like remotely. Mm -hmm. So we had to simulate or like to, to alter like create an alternative to that needed physical presence so we use tools like google hangout google meet or zoom so those are tools we've been leveraging so that we can actually simulate that presence that collaboration spirit that's also so important to, to the odyssey program so we've done that uh we've been quite successful so far at it so uh and it, it we actually see better results uh from the past weeks uh, in terms of deliverables, in terms of uh, uh, how, um, how fast or the, the pace at which uh, the participants are learning. So we're, we're really satisfied with the way this, this forced adaptation uh, enabled us to alter our program, um, making us believe that we could actually have or offer uh, a remote program of some kind at some point. Uh, down the so line. In fact, it would be a, a factor of growth for you, uh, developing yes. physical 
locations, but also online courses. So this was an opportunity for you to understand something else, finally. Exactly. And we did, it's, it's another discovery that we've made is that our program can be adapted to simulate that, that so needed presence and that dedication and that commitment. We can actually have it happen online. Uh, That's great. As well as, as physically. So this is a, a good understanding that we came up with. And another very interesting point, you know, um, is uh, what you say about the offshoring and outsourcing. Can you, can you tell us a bit? Uh, sure. Yeah. So the, um, essentially, what we mean by this is th there, there are many outcomes possible at the end of a graduation for, uh, uh, for, for a participant in Coolbox. So either he or she will find a job herself in the market. Uh, either he or she will accept a job offer from one of our partners. We have uh, partners paying a uh, high amount of money to have a first right of refusal on our graduates. That's how uh, high quality they are. Uh, and there's a third option where we're actually the digital workshop of Coldbox will hire these people. And we do tons of projects uh, and we put them in front of real situation. Uh, our clients are uh, in New York. Uh, they're in Los Angeles, they're in San Francisco, uh, lots of them in Canada as well. Uh, and we managed to uh, provide them with real life situations that enable them to gain experience and ramp up quick, quicker. So they stay with us, we polish their training a little bit, uh, and we create um, amazing products through that. And we have uh, customers who understand what, what they're in front of and they choose us instead of uh, offshore options that they used to have. So we actually see a trend where people give up on their Indian endeavors or their, uh, their Ukrainian teams, and they prefer to have someone in the same time zone as them, who speaks the same language as them, uh, with the same mindset, uh, very tight values shared across the board. And they prefer to have interaction with teams like the ones called Buck and Assemble instead of, uh, of the time difference and the, the, uh, the, the extra work that's required in specifications to make things work in projects. So um, much easier to delegate things to people who are nearby than, uh, than specify and control the quality of products that are made so far abroad. So we've been experiencing a, a tremendous growth in that vector. Okay, Nicolas, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.